-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I'm pleased to welcome everyone on International Roundtable on Organized Crime and Criminal Traditions. So, uh, we are about to start the round panel dedicated to current tendencies in criminalization on the national and transnational levels. I'm Konstantin Slobodinyuk, and uh, of course, it's an honor to be your moderator on this discussion panel. And uh, let me please introduce our speakers in the order they are given the floor to speak. So, uh, Professor Antonio Nicasso, academician, a best-selling author, internationally recognized expert on organized crime, author of more than 30 books on criminal organization. He's a regular consultant to governments and law enforcement agencies around the world. He teaches at the Queen's University Italian School of Middlebury College, USA, and uh, St. Jerome's University, Ontario. Oleg Maltz, an author, criminologist, psychologist, photographer, investigative journalist, academician of Ukrainian Academy of Sciences, founder of Criminalistics Institute and Expeditionary Corps. He is an author of numerous books in the areas such as applied history, sociology, depth, psychology, philosophy, criminalistics, and criminology. James Finkenauer, Organized crime expert, author, distinguished professor emeritus at Rutgers University, uh, former director of the National Institute of Justice, Washington, D.C. Dr. Finkenauer is an expert in human trafficking, juvenile and inter international criminal justice, author of numerous books on Russian organized crimes in the U.S. Don Pinock, South African writer, investigative journalist and photographer author of 17 books about history, politics, the environment, gangs, and science. Don Pinnock is a research fellow at the Center of Criminology, University of Cape Town. Colin Chin, Chinese-American criminologist who has written extensively on issues related to Chinese crime groups and networks, including Chinatown gangs and tongues, human smuggling organization, organized crime in Taiwan and China, the heroin and methamphetamine business in Myanmar and China, and sex trafficking network in Asia and the United States. And uh, Alexander Sainchin, Doctor of Law, Academician of Ukrainian Academy of Sciences, Chairman of the Humanitarian Scientific Society. He is a lawyer, the author of many monographs and scientific works in the field of criminalistics. So let me um, please deliver a few words about the format of this round table. Uh, as I said, uh, almost all the experts of the given round table know each other in person or at the distance. Uh, thus, it would be great if this meeting turns into a discussion round table. So, uh, since we have two questions and uh, every guest is kindly requested to present their thoughts on them. Um, but in between these two questions, uh, there will be a discussion part. So, uh, where you will be uh, able to ask questions to each other. Of course, scholars uh, that uh, specialize in America might be interested to hear uh, what is the current situation on South Italian crimes. Uh, so, uh, each speaker holds uh, the opportunity to answer two questions formulated and presented to speakers in advance. So, please limit uh, the uh, extent uh, of answers up to 8-10 minutes. To begin with, we shall start uh, the discussion on the first subject. Afterwards, um, each expert will have the opportunity to express his views on the second topic. So, the first question on the round table is, what are the current tendencies in criminalization on the national and transnational levels? And I give the floor to Professor Antonio Nicasso. Uh, dear, dear Antonio, please turn on your mic. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. So uh, thank you. I will uh, start with uh, uh, a little bit of uh, information about uh, the state of uh, the arts uh, in, in Italy uh, among the major three criminal organizations. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the Mafia, the Drangheta and uh, the Camorra um, are doing well uh, despite uh, the pandemic. Uh, they have uh, evolved in the age of uh, technology and uh, mobsters are nothing if not uh, 
adaptive. And, uh, so uh, I just finished a book about uh, organized crime in the pandemic and the, I had access to crime rates and up-to-date statistics from the Ministry of the Interior and the Anti-Crime Directorate. And, uh, and, and what I can uh, share with you is that uh, uh, in Italy, the three major criminal organizations did not suffer any losses during the first uh, uh, lockdown. Uh, all crime against uh, person and property between March the 1st and July uh, the 1st, 2020 increased compared to the same uh, period in 2019. Uh, Drug-related uh, um, offenses have increased by 2.02%. Property-related offenses have also increased substantially, uh, plus uh, um, so 13% uh, 13 for counterfeit product and violation of the trademark. 11% uh, um, for extortion, 14% of fraud and uh, telematic scams, 4.35% uh, long sharking, 8.5% receiving stolen goods, 17% on money laundering, 09% uh, about robberies. Uh, crime against the person have also increased with 3.49% uh, 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 in terms of the murder and 14% um, uh, of intended injury. So uh, all crime increased. This is, uh, this give an idea how they are able to adapt to new situation, able to transform crisis into opportunities. Uh, um, the Drangheta, for example, is a, probably the one of the uh, most powerful uh, criminal organization in the world they control uh, drug trafficking uh, in uh, especially uh, cocaine in, in in europe and they have a ramification all over the world in in australia in canada united states in latin america in africa in europe uh, all over the place what they did they they change uh, a route, narcotic routes. They, uh, instead of uh, um, uh, shipped their uh, cocaine to Italy, they use the port in Spain, in, 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 in the Netherlands, in, in Belgium. So we saw an increase of the seizure of the cocaine related to the Italian criminal organization in, in Spain rather than, than, than Italy. But what we saw was that the they were able to supply the demand. And, and we learn in one case that a mobster had, was arrested while he was uh, uh, um, um, hiding uh, 500 kilos of, of, of cocaine. And so we had reason to believe that the, their warehouse were full of uh, cocaine and, and many other uh, controlled substance during the lockdown. They changed the delivery system. In some uh, city, they use uh, drones. They use uh, uh, cabs. Uh, they, they use a social network to reach their, their, their clients. And, and, and practically, this... Uh, I give an idea of uh, how they uh, they were able to adapt uh, uh, to this uh, emergency that uh, that uh, was unexpected, uh, especially uh, um, for Italy with that uh, uh, intensity and. and and practically, what 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 we learn uh, was that uh, uh, they were involved in 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 money laundering. They were able to um, supply not only uh, foods, but also uh, they were able to invest money. 
they try to purchase failing companies, they try to invest money, they try to launder money because they made a lot of money, especially through uh, um, uh, narcotics. And, 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 and of course, uh, uh, this is uh, what the many people uh, uh, are, uh, are now uh, uh, afraid in the second phase of, uh, of the pandemic. The idea that they will be able to put their hands on the stimulus funds, they will be able to do what they did during the 2008 uh, global uh, crisis when when they were able to invest a, a, a lot of money uh, into the the legal the legal market, and, and and they are able to do that because, uh, unlike uh, many people perceive about uh, um, mafia and mafia-like criminal organization, uh, their strain is the ability to create a network of trust. The idea that they are strong, but they are strong not because they are able to bonding uh, uh, um, people within the organization, but they're strong because they are able to bridge themselves and to connect the underworld to the upper world. And so the level of, of, of corruption, the level of, of networking, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. And in any criminal investigation, police is able to uncover um, the, the lawyers, uh, brokers, uh, charter accountants, politicians, uh, judges, uh, um, police officers. So that's what the, the mafia is all about. The idea of uh, uh, this uh, 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 alliances, that the strategic alliance that they are able to build, not only in Italy, but uh, in any other uh, uh, place in, in, in the world. And that's it's the strain of, uh, of a criminal org organization such as the Andromeda, the ability to to corrupt people, to uh, reproduce the same uh, uh, network of trust uh, uh, everywhere, in Europe, in, in North America, in South America, in Africa, and in many, uh, in Australia, and many other, in many other parts. And, and this is uh, practically the state of the art in terms of, uh, of uh, 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 Italian criminal organization. They are uh, uh, well connected, but uh, they are able uh, to invest their money uh, mostly outside of Italy. Uh, and, and I'm going to conclude uh, for what I like to call the, the path of least resistance. In Italy, they are facing the challenge of law enforcement. In Europe, they are not facing the same challenges in terms of uh, fraudulent crime, money laundering, financial crime. They are attract attention only when they use violence, but they are using a kind of strategic violence. Their violence is more strategically than practically. They are trying to minimize violence. They try to corrupt people. And that's what they are doing. They are moving in places where there is no anti-mafia legislation, where the legislation is not, uh, is, is lenient, if we want to put that way. And that's what they are doing. And in those places, they are reproducing the same network of trust that are making them uh, strong and powerful in Italy. Thank you. Thank you, dear professor. And I give the floor to Oleg Maltsev, please. Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy to see you all. И э, приготовил небольшой анализ того, что происходит в настоящий момент времени в Европе и за ее пределами. And I have prepared a brief analysis of what is going on currently in Europe and in other places around it. Да, и у нас абсолютно совпадают взгляды с профессором Никаса, как бы. And uh, when it comes to this, uh, our visions with Professor uh, Antonio Nicasso, they totally coincide. Потому что, как он 
очень верно заметил, криминал обладает на сегодняшний день теми вещами, которые не обладает сегодня никто. As Professor Antonio rightly noted, currently uh, organized crime possesses those qualities and things that are not accessible to other people, that other people do not have. То есть они привыкли жить в состоянии вот этого кризиса постоянно. So this organized, organ, um, or, organized criminal organizations, they used to living in this emergency type of situation. So this is something quite natural for them. То есть любая, любой криминал, по сути своей, это же вещь нелегальная, то есть это подполье. When, I mean, certainly any criminal activity is something illegal by its nature. Да, то есть они привыкли находиться в состоянии нелегальности. So that is what I'm trying to convey, that they are used to living in this illegal pressure type of situation. This is not something new for them. И для, для них кризис не является какой-то особенной как бы ситуацией, которая на них как-то влияет. So uh, henceforth, the crisis is not something extraordinary for them that would impact them drastically in a negative manner. То есть они боеспособнее на сегодняшний день, чем любые правоохранительные органы, как бы. So as things, uh, as current state of affairs clearly demonstrates to us, organized crime is even more capable, ha has more capacity and more power than law enforcement agencies in certain aspects. И прежде всего психологически. And in the first place, they are um, more um, capable from psychological perspective. Второе. Second thing. Uh, у них есть абсолютно беспрепятственная возможность передвигаться по миру, в отличие от нас всех в пандемию. Second thing that unfortunately makes them more advantageous to us is that during the pandemic they have total freedom and I mean they have an opportunity to move around the world somehow in contrast to us. То есть делают они это абсолютно легально. And they try to manage to do that in a legal manner. То есть, как заметил профессор Никаса, у них поразительная способность коррумпировать кого угодно. As uh, Professor Antonio has noted, they have that extraordinary ability to corrupt uh, any kind of officials around the world. Поэтому у них по 5, 6, 7, 10 паспортов. That is why they end up having 5, 10 uh, different foreign passports. То есть, а, а, а надо будет 20. And if needed, I'm sure they might even do 20 of them. И они абсолютно легально перемещаются по миру, что ставит их в особое привилегированное положение перед всеми бизнесменами, которые в мире на сегодняшний день существуют. So from financial viewpoint, um, organized, I mean, this, um, representatives of this uh, crime organizations, they are more privileged than any businessman currently in the world by their ability to move around. Бизнес, которым они занимаются сегодня, если мы говорим о драмгете, как бы, да, то есть это как бы бизнес, который из одного доллара делает там тысячу долларов. And for instance, if we are speaking about organization as Drangheta, uh, currently it's in the position that it is making like thousand dollars from one dollar. Да, поэтому как бы деньги у них огромные и нелегальные. So they end up having huge chunks of money that are not legal. Им не надо платить налоги. They don't need to pay taxes. Да, им, им не нужно как бы кому-то отдавать какую-то часть прибыли. They don't need to share their profits with any other entity. И самое главное, им не надо платить зарплату. And the most important thing is that they don't have to pay the salary. Да, то есть они никому не платят зарплату. У них все заняты и все получают деньги. Because everybody in the organization, they are all doing their thing and they don't have to pay the salary. They are doing their own activity and they get money for that. And now let's shift our attention to what is going on in Europe. То есть, практически шесть месяцев европейская экономика остановлена. So practically for, in the course of six months, European economy is stagnant. I mean, it's static. It's not moving anywhere. В настоящий момент времени в Германии отменен Октоберфест, то есть это праздник знаменитый, как бы, который, как бы, ну, по сути, последний раз даже во время войны не отменялся. 
So for instance, one of the bright examples in Germany, they have canceled Oktoberfest, which is a very major holiday, which was not even canceled during war times. То есть сегодня как бы Люфтганза несет миллиардные убытки. And uh, company as Lufthansa is uh, having like миллиард, миллиард, миллиардные убытки. Billions of losses. Да. По сути, Бавария понесла миллиардные убытки за шесть месяцев как бы простое как бы всего производства. In the course of six months, Bavaria also lost billions when it comes to manufacturing. Думаю, в Италии не лучше. And I don't think Italy is doing any better. Совершенно не лучше, как бы. То есть, по сути, сегодня те, кто занимаются честно, как бы бизнес, они работать не могут. Basically, people that are used to do the fair business, they cannot work in these conditions. А криминал работать может спокойно. Они как работали, так и работают. In contrast to this, criminal is uh, doing the way they are even better. То есть, по сути своей, раз все стоит, это стоимость активов уменьшается. And since uh, economies are stagnant, uh, it would mean that the cost of assets are decreasing as well. То есть, так как активы уменьшаются, они становятся привлекательными для инвестиций. And thus, they would be more alluring, more, um, more attractive to investments. Да. Но чтобы инвестировать, нужно иметь деньги. However, in order to invest, you have to have money. А у них есть деньги. And they organize crime, they have that money. То есть сегодня, по сути, экономически идет захват средств производства Европы криминалом. So what is happening economically is that uh, basically crime is seizing uh, the property and different other financial means of Europe. То есть, по сути своей, они сегодня готовы забирать те компании, которые были крайне прибыльные, они станут крайне прибыльными после пандемии, просто сейчас эти компании на грани банкротства. And so the companies that are about to go bankrupt, they are being bought by, uh, by criminal organizations, and certainly after the pandemic, those organizations, those businesses are going to become profitable. То есть, а по сути своей, по сути своей, реструкту... захват средств производства приведет к реструктуризации рынка. And consequently, uh, logically, the seizure, the, the robbing of the market, um, would lead to the restructurization of the mar market as a whole. А изменение конъюнктуры и структуризации рынков приведет к тому, что возникнет угроза захвата власти и изменения общественного и государственного строя. And the, change, the changes that take place in the structure of the market will inevitably bring uh, this threat to the government and to the structure of the society in general. Еще один очень важный момент, то есть то, то качество, которым обладают криминал, как бы в отличие от всех других бизнесменов и политиков, Another important quality that crime unfortunately possesses, uh, which is not seen among businessmen and politics, is the following. С ним очень легко договариваться. I mean, people find it very easy to make an agreement with crime. То есть, если вы там являетесь каким-то официальным политиком, и у вас есть какая-то политическая программа, платформа, или вы бизнесмен, у вас существует какая-то философия, so, for instance, if uh, there is a politician who has his own politics, has his own agenda and program, or if there is a businessman who has a large organization, and if those people are trusted by other citizens, then in such a case, those two example figures they cannot change their opinions or their goals in a single second. They cannot just leave everything and say, no, now I will do something else. А криминалу все равно. In contrast to those people, I mean, to those examples, criminal is different. It's much more flexible and it doesn't care what и, it is engaged in. Им абсолютно все равно с кем договариваться, с кем решать вопрос. They don't, I mean, it's not important for them with whom they are going to be working and cooperating and with whom they are going to be uh, leading their activities. Они, как, знаете, как хамелеон, очень быстро меняют цвет. Как бы. 
crime is like a chameleon, the animal that uh, quickly changes its shapes and colors. В одну минуту и вообще все равно их кроме власти ничего не интересует. Because they don't care about anything but power. Да, то есть как бы и каким образом они добьются этой власти еще большего могущества, их тоже вопрос не, ну, не сильно беспокоит. And also they do not uh, really care, they're not selective about the means, about how they will attain that power. Да, поэтому как бы они могут договариваться с кем угодно. That is why they can make agreement with anybody. Вот, например. Example. Uh, между Евросоюзом и Россией, например, могут быть напряженные отношения. So, uh, between Russia and Euro, uh, European Union, uh, there might be strained relationship. Но между криминалом России и криминалом Италии нет напряженных отношений никаких. However, uh, the relationship between, let's say, Italian crime and Russian crime, they are not strained. I mean, they don't have problems. Они, ну, они отсутствуют. То есть какая, какая разница, как, какова политика? Politics, I mean. да, по, поэтому они в абсолютно привилегированном положении, а я бы сказал на сегодняшний день в монопольном положении на рынке. А монополия ведет к сверхприбыли. Know, И что нам только что продемонстрировал в цифровых показателях великолепно профессор Никасов. Спасибо огромное. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Dean Legmanitsev, and uh, James Finkenauer, you will be next, so you can start. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you again for inviting me, uh, and I recall our discussion back in uh, May. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take a, a slightly different bent than probably what you have in mind, and what I had in mind not so long ago. An interesting thing is that we, we met in May and we, were we talked about the relationship between what was going on with the pandemic and what its impact would be and what we thought it might become on crime and justice issues and an interesting conversation. That was in about the third week in May, if I recall. A week later in Minneapolis, Minnesota, a black man was killed by the police and that event and subsequent events of that kind, killings of black men by police, several, several of them in different cities, unfortunately, this has occurred, has turned upside down in the United States perspectives about justice and law and so on. And so the last, ever since then, last four or five months, this has been a priority focus by, across, the, across the board. People, people who are, that I know, friends, who never talked to me about crime and justice issues, all of a sudden are interested in the, in the police and what the police are doing. Uh, and do, do, do black lives matter? Do blue lives matter? Do all lives matter? And what that, what that has done is dug down deep in a, in a very critical sore, if you will, in American society, namely racism, and racism whose history goes back to slavery and the founding of the country. And, and the, this phenomenon has raised those issues. So we have on the one hand, this, this people who are calling for the abolition of the police, get rid of the police. Then we have a slightly less drastic notion, defund the police. This is a vague notion as to what people mean when they say we should defund the police. Do they mean no funding for police or do they mean some of the police funding should be shifted to other purposes, which is what most people I think mean by this. And by that they mean mental health issues, drug addiction issues and so on. And then on the other hand, people are calling for more police, more well-equipped police, bringing in military equipment to, to, to arm the police, bringing in federal 
uh, 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 troops, if you will, and National Guard units using tear gas and, and, uh, and various things. So we had this enormous spectrum of, of, of disagreement on these sides. And then we have the participants, and they range everywhere from people who are, who are peaceful, protesting, exercising their First Amendment rights to state their views and have their views known and so on, on the one hand. On the other hand, joining up with them, or, or joining up with them, we have people coming from outside of those communities who sort of hook on, if you will, like a parasite onto these, these uh, protesters, uh, and they're, they're agitators. And also part of them are the people who move beyond simple protest and marching and carrying signs and making their voices known. They start fires. They start looting stores. They start shooting at the police. So now they have moved, protest has moved from a, a vocal expression of, of view toward the police and, and what's happening to engaging in what are, what are defined as criminal activities. So you, you cross a line between what's legitimate and what's clearly illegitimate in terms of what you're going to have in, in protesting. That's on the left side. Then on the right side of the political spectrum, we have these militia organizations. And I use the term organization loosely because organization implies some kind of formal structure. And some of these groups have little or no formal structure other than that they share a certain common ideology. And what they do is they come into these communities, and we've seen it in cities across the country, Seattle and Portland and Kenosha and Minneapolis and other, and other cities and cities here in Florida uh, as well. And they come in from outside, they come in with military weapons, AK-47 rifles. Uh, and they're often dressed in neo-Nazi uh, outfits. Uh, and they're clearly right-wing organizations who, who claim that they're there to maintain law and order. So now we have this clash between a, a multi-faced group on one side, the left side that, that as I said, extends everywhere from, from peaceful protest, legitimate exercise of, of freedom of speech to arsonists, looters, rioters. And on the other side, we got the law and order people who come in to crack down. And then we got gunfire go back and forth between, between the two sides, police officers being shot, civilians being shot. This, this, this consequence of this has embroiled the country for months now and has forced people to choose up sides. Uh, and, and, that, and that's where the Black Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter, All Lives Matter issues tend to come into play. And if I, if I could just give you a personal example of how difficult uh, this topic is, and, and I'm not suggesting you don't think it's difficult, I belong to a philosophy discussion group. Uh, and we get together regularly to take up broad philosophical questions like, is there life after death and you know, things like that. About two months ago, it was proposed that the, our group should discuss racism and racism in the United States. And the idea of the, the, the group, the, the underpinning of the group is enlightenment. That's why we want to do this. We, we change our views. We get different people's opinions. We're enlightened by this discussion and so on. This discussion in this group about racism became so contentious and people became so locked in to their, their existing perspectives. People started calling people names. They started accusing them of all sorts of things and they quickly moved from a rational discussion intended to bring about enlightenment to personal attacks. Now, if that can happen in a group who start out just as an intellectual exercise, imagine what happens when you take that same thing to the street and you got people with agendas and so on who, are, who want to exercise that. So we, got, we have some serious issues uh, surrounding this. Uh, and, and, I, and I don't think anybody knows what the right answers are. I used to work in police training. So I, and, I'm a, I'm, and I happen to believe that better training of police is one of the things that, that can be done. But I don't think that that's by any event the, the sole solution to this problem. Police, the police departments represent the communities that they police. They represent the power structure in those communities. 
and 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 police departments if if there's a racist power structure in a community the police represent that racist power structure and they exercise those powers uh and and you know so there's the issues about le using less than lethal force when when should the police react with with firearms and so on should they use choke holes all of these controversial things that have that have come into play there, there are people talking about these things that never, never even realized that police officers use chokeholds uh, on people. And, and of course, one of the critical dimensions that brought this to light is uh, cell phones. Everybody's got a personal camera, and as soon as something occurs on the street, they are right there with pictures of it. The police can no longer deny this. They see if they see a black man sh being shot seven times in the back while he's trying to get into his car. The police can't deny that that happened. There it is. Uh, you know, up front, people can see this. So this is making it much more difficult to hide these sorts of activities, uh, as, as uh, unfortunately was too often true in the past. So we are in a real struggle among, among the other struggles that we have in this country. We got a real struggle as how we're going to deal with this and how, and what's going to be the resolution and what are communities, when, when are the, when are communities going to accept and what are they going to accept in terms of police reforms and, and, and so on to deal with these kinds of, of developments. And I, and I would be very interested to hear what some of you folks think about this and, 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 and what you see looking at it from, from your, where you are, what, what do you see? What do you, what do you, how is this being projected elsewhere? And, and, and what are people taking away from this? With that, I'll stop. Thank you, <clears throat> dear Professor Kenauer. <laughs> and uh, dear Kenauer, uh, as I understand uh, this last question, uh, you wish to, to discuss after the first round of answers, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. You would like to discuss it, okay. Yes. Uh, but now I give the floor to Don Pinak, please. Yeah, thank you very much. It's great to be back again. Um, as the only representative of Africa, I'm going to drag you south of the equator. Um, and I, I'm going to look at something that I've been uh, uh, investigating for some time, and that's the uh, very different to, to what Jim's talking about. Uh, this is the impact of the illegal wildlife trade on the destabilization of Africa and on the environment itself. We, um, the, the, it's hard to estimate the, 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 the value of crime, uh, but they, it's been estimated that up to 23 billion US dollars changes hands worldwide um, around the uh, wildlife crime uh, markets. And, and this is often, very often run by very sophisticated international, well-organized criminal uh, markets. They don't only deal with wildlife crime, they deal with a whole range of things, including drugs and arms. Now, there, there are two sides to the, the, this problem. One is the impact on the environment. The impact on the environment is phenomenal. Uh, uh, Asia's desire for exotic animals and uh, animal products um, is looting, unfortunately, looting Africa. And uh, probably over the next 10 to 15 years, Elephants, rhinos, pangolins, tigers, black bears, and many other species will be extinct as a result of this. Now, um, that's the one side of it, and it's, in, it's, it's damaging the environment. The other side of that is it's destabilizing many African countries. Uh, poachers, uh, armed organized criminal syndicates, they're outgunning security forces, they're looting villages, they're decimating the animal populations and their haul is mostly being transported out by Asian agents who bribe officials, undermine the security of national states. Um, and this hunger for ivory, ma ivory mainly uh, is stimulating a massive um, transnational organized crime system. It's flooding areas with uh, weapons. Um, so, uh, most of the poaching weapons now are coming out of Czechoslovakia. I think they're called ZKs. They're, it's a firm in Czechoslovakia somehow they're ending up in Africa. And there's mounting tension in, in the states in which this happens, this, this poaching is happening. Now there's three, probably almost four main areas where it's happening. One, the killing fields really are, um, they, they are West Africa, the Congo Basin, East Africa, and it's starting to move south into, into South Africa. Now, 
these ivory, why, why is this happening? It's not just because local people want money um, and they're using poaching. And that happens, of course. That's one of the problems. But the real issue and the real problem is that uh, ivory and rhino horn poaching, pangolin poaching, is being used by um, militias to extend war situations all, all over the continent. Um, uh, they, they are, the, these are things like the Lord's Resistance Army in Uganda, the uh, Janjaweed, uh, the Sudanese Janjaweed are extraordinary. They, uh, as you know, they would have been, they were the problems in Darfur. They are, they are coming south now uh, on ivory raids into Chad, into Cameroon, the Central African Republic, into Congo. And um, you've got now Al-Shabaab operating in Kenya. Uh, they're starting to operate in northern Mozambique. They are poaching or they are setting off poaching uh, 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 chains um, in order to get arms to fund their uh, military operations. Um, uh, they all, poaching is also taking place, uh, the National Army in, in Congo, the FARDC is, um, is one of the major poachers. And uh, in Congo alone, or equatorial Africa really, in the last, uh, probably in the last hundred years, there were three million elephants, there are very few now. Uh, the, the, the ivory flows are, are decimating elephants. Um, and uh, what the, the, the amount of money that the, the, the increase in the value is something like 4,000% from the guy who hunts the rhino or hunts the um, elephant or even catches a pangolin to its final sale. So huge amounts of money are being made. And um, increasingly, um, uh, Organizations like the triads are moving deeper and deeper into both ends. They're moving into Vietnam and China. They're also moving into Africa deeper and deeper. Um, China is uh, a major funder um, and uh, industrial support system for many African countries. And uh, as they move in, and particularly uh, into the rainforests, they they push roads in to get wood. Those roads are used by poachers and uh, the, the, the ivory flows out along those streams. Now, um, what's happening is that those networks are getting increasingly professionalized. They are interfering with government systems. Uh, it's moving into narcotics. It's moving into wet weapons. Uh, minerals are starting to flow out on the same routes uh, coltan is very important for your cell phone, uh, human trafficking, money laundering, there's a whole range of issues. And another thing I just want to look at very briefly is there's an organization called CITES, it's a UN organization that regulates trade of wildlife. CITES is being corrupted. Um, you can, I could buy for $5,000 an illegal CITES permit, I could export 20 elephants on it. Um, it's um, Dealers are, are, are perverting the entire CITES system um, and there are a whole range of scams. There's a C scam. Uh, animals are, are registered according to their, their rarity. Uh, appendix one is they may not be traded. Uh, they have to be protected. Uh, um, appendix two is that they are captive bred and so they can be traded. So wild animals are being laundered as captive bred. There's the Z scam, which is uh, if you send an animal to a zoo, it's considered to be for science. Uh, zoos are buying and reselling animals. They, they, they're perverting the whole process. So um, uh, elephants particularly is my, I've just done a book on elephants uh, called The Last Elephants. Uh, it's a sad title. Um, and uh, elephants are now being poached uh, about three elephants an hour. 24-7 uh, are being poached in Africa at the moment. So uh, it, it's a massive problem. We, we are losing, there's only about 600,000 elephants down from 3 million uh, 100 years ago. Now, the, there is a solution to this. If governments would be prepared to do that, you hit the supply chains. If you break the supply chains, 
and you break the whole thing. The supply chains between the actual moment of poaching and, and the movement of that across Africa. If, uh, if we can stop that and stop the, the, the stuff moving out of the ports, we can stop this. But the, the, the real um, uh, problem is, is the, the, um, the flood of armaments and militias in Africa around the poaching issue. Poaching is supporting uh, the destabilization of countries right across Africa. And that's a major problem. Um, heroin now, I think, is being paid for by rhino horn. Uh, so there's trading. You don't want money involved. Um, uh, 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 cocaine is coming in here and being paid for with stolen cars from South Africa. Abalone, which is a shellfish, is paying for um, uh, methamphetamine. Uh, so so th there's a trading system uh, in place and arms are moving along those same areas. So that's, uh, you know, it can open for discussion later, but that's the kind of stuff that, that I'd be looking at. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, and uh, I give the floor to Colin Chin, please. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, round table. Uh, my name is Ko Lin Chen. I am a Cantonese Chinese who was born in Myanmar or, or used to be called Burma. So I, I was raised there I, at the age of 16. Uh, our family moved back to Taiwan. So I stayed in Taiwan for like about 10 years. And then I came to the United States as a student uh, in 1978. So I'm in the U.S. for about uh, 42 years now. So what I'm going to talk about today is, is about Chinese organized crime. And when uh, people talk about Chinese organized crime, very often they use the word Chinese mafia. And according to my research over the past uh, 30 or 30 years or so, I tend to prefer to differentiate uh, the various Chinese uh, organized crime groups into two major groups. So the first major group are the so-called the Jianghu groups. Jianghu mean rivers and lakes. River and lakes means that these are rootless people, uh, floating people. And this is the, the first group. And the second groups are the so-called non-Jianghu groups. So the first group, the first category, the Jianghu group will involve uh, altogether six groups, okay? The first group is the triad. So this is uh, uh, organized crime groups based in Hong Kong and Macau. And some of the most uh, well-known Triad groups involve the 14K, the Sun Yon, the Wo Xing Wo. And they normally have thousands of members and they, they have a very uh, elaborate uh, structure. And they also involve in a variety of both legal and illegal activities. So that is the first group. Uh, the second group involve organized gangs in Taiwan. So groups like the Bamboo United, the Four Seas, the Celestial Alliance, and they also have thousands of members and they have a very elaborate structure also. And like the Hong Kong triads, they also involve in a variety of both legal and illegal activities. So organized gangs in Taiwan were formed by uh, offspring of mainland Chinese, okay? Chinese who moved to Taiwan from mainland China. And the third group is the Jiao Tou group. The Jiao Tou groups are the local Taiwanese crime groups. And they tend to be uh, smaller in size. They may have like 30 to 40 members and they mainly involve in gambling, prostitution, and also very active in politics. I believe most of you probably read about the, the uh, parliament in Taiwan. 
uh, the legislators very often involved in a fist fight inside the, the legislature. And the reason is because many of them belong, uh, they, they were gangsters. And then the fourth group is the mafia style gang in China. So the Chinese authorities will not admit that they have mafia. They call organized crime groups in China as mafia style gang, meaning that they are very serious, but they have not reached the stage of mafia yet. So they always say, oh, we don't have mafia. We only have mafia like gang. And then these gangs in China tend to be also smaller. They have dozens of people. They have uh, uh, some kind of a structure and they are involved in gambling, prostitution, and also legal businesses. So China has a very um, uh, strict definition of mafia-like gang. In order to be considered a mafia-like gang in China, this group has to have stability, has to have structure, has to have economic strength, uh, also use violence. And the most important requirement is that this group has to have a protective umbrella, meaning that these groups are being protected and supported by the uh, authorities. And then after China, here in the United States, uh, we have Chinese Tongs. And these are community-based organizations and they normally have thousands of members, but only some of the uh, core members are actively involved in illegal activities. Mainly, they are related to uh, street gangs in Chinatowns across the United States. So after the Tong, here in the United States, we also have Chinese gangs, like the Ghost Shadows, the Flying Dragons. So these are some of the uh, 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 well-known Chinese gangs. And they tend to have hundreds of members. They are very active in gambling, extortion, and also uh, street violence. So all these six groups are what I will call the Jianghu uh, people. And they will be uh, qualified as Chinese organized crime, okay? Uh, however, there is also a whole bunch of Chinese crime groups that are not considered as Jianghu, not considered as organized crime. And these groups will involve, for example, those groups that are very active in heroin trafficking. Uh, for example, the Wa in the Golden Triangle, the Gokan in the Golden Triangle, the Mongla group in the Golden Triangle. They are not considered to be Jianghu people. They are not considered to be gangsters. And then there's those groups that are very active in human smuggling, uh, especially in mainland China, uh, in that province called Fujian province. The majority of the illegal immigrants being smuggled into the United States are from Fujian province. The majority of the illegal immigrants in, in Europe are from the Zhejiang province. So these are the two major uh, sending communities in mainland China. And then the third group will be the human traffickers. These are the people who transported Chinese women all over the world to engage in prostitution. And of course, uh, someone just uh, mentioned about uh, Chinese groups that are involved in wildlife trafficking. And most of these groups are based in Yunnan province near the Burmese border. And also Guangzhou is considered to be one of the major market for uh, smuggled uh, wild, wildlife. And then finally is the counterfeiting. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm working on a book about uh, counterfeiting of luxury goods in mainland China. And of course, the the center of counterfeiting in mainland China is in, in Guangzhou. So my point is that when we talk about Chinese organized crime, uh, we have to understand that there are two major categories, the Jianghu group and the Nanjiang Jianghu group. 
And it is also very important to uh, uh, differentiate that these groups normally, okay, and, and I use the word normally, do not work together. They are independent. Uh, there may be some interaction among these groups, okay, uh, even between Jianghu people and non Jianghu people. But very often it is on an ad hoc basis. It is uh, based on a particular criminal endeavor. And then once they accomplish the goal, they parted way. There's no lasting cooperation exists among these various groups. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. And I give the floor to Professor Alexander Sainchen and Irina Lopatyuk will translate. Alexander Sigeich, вам слово. Не слышно. Да, на месте, на месте. Пожалуйста. Как слышно, на месте, хорошо? Да, отлично. Добрый вечер, уважаемые дамы и господа. Good evening, dear ladies and gentlemen. Мне очень приятно видеть старых своих знакомых. I'm so glad to see both my old friends and acquaintances. И крупных ученых в этой области со всех концов мира. As well as I'm pleased to greet all the grandeurs scholars who are here together. Actually, we have collected somehow from different parts of the world. Не прошло и полгода, как мы вновь с вами встретились для того, чтобы обсудить ту же тему, которую мы обсуждали в апреле мае. I should say it's like almost half a year we've managed to group up together and to prolong the discussion that we've started actually May this year. Если вы не возражаете, уважаемые господа, я ознакомлю вас с некоторыми статистическими позициями Европола о состоянии преступности в Европе и в Украине в период пандемии коронавируса. And if you don't mind, dear colleagues, I would like to represent uh, certain statistics uh, that actually this information is taken from Europol and it concerns the picture of uh, the criminal picture both of Europe and Ukrainian realia. Как мы и предполагали, в связи с тем, что э, малое число людей выходит на улицы, Граждане Европы и Украины перешли в киберпространство, то есть в, в, и, в систему интернет для общения. Just as we actually uh, managed to foresee previously, I mean like half a year, the majority of people both in Europe and in Ukraine, they actually during the period of lockdown, stopped entering the streets and stopped uh, communicating with one another just in person. And on the other hand, they started to communicate just in the internet, I mean, uh, via the socials. Как всегда, Украина идет номер один в киберпреступности, в сфере подделки и использования ресурсов Украины, мобильности и медицинских препаратах. So, Professor Sainchen is concerned that Ukraine again is like top one country that's involved in uh, cybercrime uh, counterfeiting of, uh, let me say, some medical supplies and uh, the use of these supplies, as well as of illegal trade. Речь идет о том, что мы с марта объявили карантин, а представители власти вскрыли уже резервные склады и стали торговать масками по всему миру. Везде, кроме Украины. Well, we should say that actually uh, the lockdown in Ukraine was uh, in March. And uh, um, meanwhile, the other countries were uh, trying to take a certain decision. In Ukraine, the reserve, stocks, the reserve stocks were already closed. They were open up. And all the medical masks and the other supplies were um, sold all around the world. По данным Европола, только за март и июнь этого года преступники в Украине 
обогатились на более чем 300 миллионов долларов. According to Europol statistics, the criminal dealing in Ukraine actually became more rich, I mean richer, like for 300,000 millions of dollars. Были попытки продажи через сети интернет средств защиты и медикаментов от коронавируса. And we should say that actually via the internet there were uh, lots of attempts found. Uh, by attempts I mean uh, the attempt to sell and to purchase various medical supplies uh, that are um, designed for coronavirus uh, issues. В Европе изъяли более 150 тысяч поддельных хирургических масок и препаратов. In Europe we should say like uh, сколько тысяч? Более 150. More than 150,000 um, medical supplies like masks uh, were counterfeited and seized from European market. Даже стали подделывать в Европе и в Украине и в России тоже лекарства против малярии хлоронхин. Вот такое простое. And uh, a special uh, medicine, um, let me say, against uh, um, the, southern, uh, the southern influence or malaria was counterfeited in Ukraine and in Europe as well. Специалисты Европола прогнозируют э, дальнейший рост мошенничества в сети э, интернет-пространства. The experts of Europol uh, provide us with certain forecasts uh, dedicated to the field of deception and the fraud uh, connected with the sale and purchase processes of uh, medical supplies. Но <coughs> мы ожидали, и это случилось, преступники перезагружают киберпространство, которое ведет к тому, что в интернет-пространстве они распространяют э, такие ведомости, которые говорят о перезагрузке номеров банковских карточек. Moreover, uh, cyber criminals in Ukraine as well as in Europe, they are like reloading and downloading the cyber uh, area. Uh, how are they doing that? Uh, they are um, posting certain information uh, claiming that banking account uh, numbers are reloaded and changed. В Украине каждый день под видом перезагрузки банковских карточек Мошенники завладевают счетами более 20-50 респондентов. And again, uh, the reality is as follows. Uh, the criminals, cyber criminals uh, in Ukraine, uh, they reboot the banking, uh, the banking cards. And these uh, fraudsters, like every week, Uh, they reboot like from 10 to 50, 100 banking accounts and take money, of course. That's the fraudulent statistics. С мая по июнь мы в Украине и в Европе фиксировали резкое снижение всех видов преступности, в том числе дорожно-транспортных происшествий. Dr. Sanchez is concerned that uh, during the period from May to July, uh, we have uh, faced a certain decrease of uh, various uh, types of criminal activities. Мы с академиком Мальцевым предполагали, что будет пора, когда будет резкий всплеск всех видов преступности. Mm -hmm. And uh, Professor Sanchez, together with uh, Dr. Mailsev, actually uh, forecasted a certain tendency that the spike or the outburst of criminal activity uh, will take its place pretty soon. В Украине и в Европе, по данным Европола, сентябрь был переломным моментом, когда наметилась резкая волна всплеса преступности. According to information of Europol statistics in uh, Ukraine, the September, the month of September, was that very breaking point that uh, made everyone see this outburst of criminal activities. Пока в августе в сентябре фиксируется 
резкий рост количества мелких краж из супермаркетов. Uh, concerning August and September, uh, lots of, uh, uh, let me say, small uh, muggling, uh, like smoke muggling, I mean like supermarket fraudery or supermarket muggling uh, are, uh, uh, let me say, are а также грабежи... in, in, in Europe. And да. what? А также грабежи в дневное время. Вырывают сумки, телефоны, сережки, все, что попадрят. Moreover, we see such a tendency that there are lots of robbery just in daytime. You know, like uh, women are walking down the street and in daytime, in sunlight, uh, robsters just uh, grab everything, like hand, uh, handbags, uh, tushions, uh, like earrings, like everything. Кроме того, кроме этого, в связи с тем, что люди изолированы в условиях быта и стали чаще употреблять алкоголь, намечается всплеск насильственных преступлений в семье и убийств на бытовой почве. Uh, Marua, we should say that during the lockdown, uh, lots of people are isolated, right? And they're buying more and more alcohol. That's why we can say that actually um, certain violent crime spree is waiting for us as well. Да, спасибо. Август, сентябрь, резкий спрос на оружие и боеприпасы. Moreover, there is one more significant tendency. Concerning August and September, there is a huge demand on weaponry and everything is connected with weapons. В Европе и в Украине спрос на оружие и боеприпасы возрос на 225%. Statistics claim that actually both in Europe and uh, both in Europe and Ukraine the demand for buying weaponry uh, increased up to 220%. That's huge. Европол, кроме этого, фиксирует резкий всплеск преступности в связи с тем, что из тюрем в Италии, Колумбии, Шри-Ланке и так далее стали выпускать Uh, moreover, your poll uh, fixes and represents certain statistics that there are lots of uh, um, like criminal activities and this outburst is connected with the fact lots of criminals are just released and set free uh, in uh, it Italy, in uh, Sri Lanka and in the other countries. No, Thank you so much oh. for your attention. Mm -hmm. Ну, пожалуй, наверное, все, Ирочка, да, потому что материалов статистических очень много, э -э но... Вы можете прислать, сайте. их разместят на сайте просто. Да, они будут на сайте, Костя, спасибо. Э -э страдают, нужно отметить, кроме этого, Ирочка, особо отметьте, что массово закрываются туркомпании по оказанию ус услуг сворачивают авиакомпании по перевозке людей. То есть та, та мобильность, которая была ранее, хотя бы намечалась частично июль в август, в сентябре резко упала. Стало mm -hmm. быть, преступность переместиться локально на участки и страны, где проживают граждане. Mm -hmm. uh, so, first of all, um... There are two options. Uh, first of all, Professor Sainshin uh, says that there are lots of uh, peculiar statistical data and they will be uploaded on the website so everyone uh, will have uh, the definite opportunity to see and to face the statistics. And secondly, there is one more tendency we should cover. Likewise, lots of companies like uh, avia companies, like uh, tourism companies, they are just shut down and closed today. And so this is one more reason uh, we are like to face certain criminal outbursts too. I mean, during the local regions um, where previously there were no such. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Sainchin. And um, you remember that uh, Jim Finkenauer, one of those experts, uh, who wanted uh, to make uh, our discussion panel more interactive. Uh, so we can start uh, the discussion uh, part. Uh, please, uh, Professor Finkenauer, formulate your uh, question. 
Okay, let, let, let me ask a question unrelated to what I talked about. Uh, I recently read, this is for, this is for the, the, at least three people here have talked about mafias. And I recently read a paper that did a comparison of, of what the author called five mafia groups. And these included Cosa Nostra in Sicily, Cosa Nostra in the United States, uh, the triads, Yakuza, uh, and the third one was Nangren, What's the, how do you pronounce that? Nagrenic Professor Nicasso will know this. Nangreta. Nangreta. Nangreta, yes. Oh, okay. And she compared these five groups, and her conclusion was that they are much less powerful now than they were in the past, that they have lost membership, they have lost resources, their influence is much less than what it was before. And I just wonder whether, whether, whether you would comment on that and whether you would agree with that. And if so, why do you think that is? Why is it that they, they, they are not as strong as they were uh, in the past? I'm sure that Dr. Nikasa is not agree with you, so dear Professor Nikasa. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I partially agree uh, in the sense that uh, Cosa Nostra uh, in the United States and Cosa Nostra in uh, Sicily, they, they have uh, less power compared uh, uh, to uh, the uh, 1970s, 1980s. Uh, the reason in the United States is uh, the, uh, um, uh, the great efforts made by the FBI to uh, concentrate the fight against the five families and I think uh, uh, Operation Commission was one of the, the, the largest uh, uh, operation uh, uh, in dismantling uh, those criminal organizations. The Sicilian Mafia made a big mistake by challenging the state. As you know, in, in Italy, the, the fight against uh, uh, the Mafia was, not a, a priori, was never a priority in the political agenda. And I think the only times where the mafia, the, the states really uh, uh, des decided to, uh, uh, to uh, fight back was when uh, Cosa Nostra uh, uh, killed a series of magistrates and practically challenged the authority of the states. Uh, in the, they, since uh, that moment, since the arrest of Totorina, to, Salvatore Provenzano, the, the, the bosses of the Cosa Nostra in Sicily, Cosa Nostra was unable to uh, rebuild and restructure the commission. Uh, and and, and, and I, I believe it, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's too early to write the obituary, but it's not so strong like it used to be. Different uh, uh, situation is, is related to the Ndrangheta. The Ndrangheta is a criminal organization on the rise. Uh, it's an organization with an annual turnover of 55 billion euros annually. It's well connected. Uh, they, they, they have a strong connection in practically all continent. Just to give you an example, in uh, recently, in, in, uh, in uh, the port of Salerno, um, the Italian police have seized uh, 14 tons of uh, amphetamine pills allegedly produced in Syria by the Islamic State of uh, Iraq. Uh, and, 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 and those uh, 84 million tablets of the drug Captagon uh, were uh, intended to fight, to, to, to to, for the uh, Europe illegal drug market. market. In another operation uh, that was uh, 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 reported by the Financial Times, international investor bought bonds backed by uh, uh, crime proceeds of, uh, of, uh, of, of the Ndrangheta. Uh, and this is according to a financial and uh, legal document uh, obtained by the financial, uh, the financial Times. And practically in one case, the bonds uh, were purchased by one of the Europe's largest private banks, the Banca Generale. 
it, it, it was about one billion of, uh, of uh, worth in, term, in terms of money. I disagree with the idea that Ndrangheta is an organization with less power compared to uh, uh, the, 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 the first decade of 2000. Also because in the last few years, they show ability to infiltrate the um, Liberal Party in Australia. Uh, they force a ministry of immigration to revoke a deportation order of a, an important member of the Ndrangheta. I went in Africa so many times uh, and uh, I totally agree with the, the concern of uh, uh, Don. Uh, the Ndrangheta at one point was heavily involved in, uh, in, the, in the Colton uh, uh, business, but also uh, in, in the areas they use uh, uh, raw diamond from, uh, from uh, South Africa to purchase uh, narcotics. I'm talking about 1980s. In the 80s, the Ndrangheta established a cell in uh, Johannesburg. Uh, uh, also, uh, the Cosa Nostra was able to corrupt the uh, officials in South Africa, Cap Town with uh, uh, the Palazzolo case, uh, 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 an important member of, uh, of the of the, the mafia that uh, went, uh, moved to South Africa and was able to avoid any kind of Italian police investigation. I, I think what to make the Italian mafia stronger at this point is the ability to uh, connect themselves with the major criminal organization in the sense that they are well connected with uh, uh, the uh, Sinaloa cartel, the Jalisco cartel of a new generation. Actually, they they are in some kind of agreement because they are the Jalisco and the, um, the Sinaloa cartel are producing um, thanks to precursors that they purchase in China. They are able to uh, produce fentanyl, and, and 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 the fentanyl in Mexico is less. Uh, uh, it's 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 uh, more it, it's it's invading the uh, U.S. Uh, the U.S. market. The Drangheta also is, uh, has a strong uh, uh, connection with uh, the Oficina de Envegado uh, uh, with the um, uh, Autodefensa Gaitanista, the organization that replaced the FARC in in Colombia. So they purchase. Uh, narcotics uh, at, at a very low uh, cost, uh, 1,000 uh, euros per kilo. But also they have a, a strong connection with the major features in Bolivia and with uh, some members of the former Sendero Luminoso in, in, in Peru. Uh, they are all over the place in Europe. And uh, my concern is that, uh, and you raised a good point, Jim, before, the idea that uh, United States is focused on racism, but the, the, and they pay less attention to uh, organized crime and other activity. It's what happened in, 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 in Europe, where the major concern now is illegal immigrants. And nobody really cares about the amount of money that move across Europe and, and be in, invested in laundry through uh, banks. I conducted uh, 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 a study uh, analyzing all the, the police investigation in Europe, in the United States, uh, uh, related to um, money laundering. And I realized that in, the, oh, in an overwhelming majority of cases, they, the, the money enter into the legal economy through banks. And so the point is, uh, imagine an organization with the 55 billion euros uh, of a turnover, an annual turnover. And they don't invest in Calabria. Calabria is the poorest region of Europe, but the home of one of the most powerful criminal organization in the world. So they invest money everywhere and, 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 and uh, uh, nobody is really say anything with the exception of sometimes they arrested some politician here and there. I remember the arrest of the ministry 
Minister of uh, Environmental in Bulgaria, but they discovered that the Ndrangheta was sent uh, uh, illegal uh, waste, uh, uh, toxic material in Bulgaria for so long, and just because they had some uh, uh, sanitary issue, uh, uh, finally discovered that there was corruption between uh, local authorities there. But I can name it, the Cyprus, uh, uh, Austria, Liechtenstein, uh, uh, um, United Kingdom, and the city of London. They don't have any interest to fight organized crime. And for that reason, um, I, I firmly believe that, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, in some way, uh, uh, nobody is really care where the money comes from. It, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, the important a time in time to have cash and to have money regardless of the source and they accepted those money everywhere the United States that has a, a stringent legislation they have some areas like the Delaware that allow some kind of a dark operation and and it's a, a place where the Drangheta has a, it's on it's on the brokers and let's don't mention the eastern european which is now a land of opportunity and and and, and unfortunately there is nothing that that we can do on one side we have criminals that benefit from globalization on the other side we do have law enforcement legislation restrained by the idea of sovereignty, jurisdiction, territorials, and, 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 and differences. And I think we will be always, uh, uh, they will be always a, a, a step forward uh, because there is no political will in the fight against uh, uh, money laundering, unless they, they, they don't use violence. If they will move, uh, uh, um, they will, keep a low profile, they will uh, uh, avoid violence. Uh, 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 I think they will, uh, they will, the money that ge they generate will enter uh, easier in, in, in the legal system in, in, in the year to come. Thank you. Thank you, dear Professor Nikasa. And also, uh, uh, dear Professor Finkenauer, as I understand, uh, you were, uh, you was interested in uh, uh, the vision of your colleagues about Black Lives Matters in the uh, U.S. Well, yeah, not just the Black Lives Matter, this whole issue as to how, how what has been going on in the U.S. for the last four months has been perceived in the rest of the world. I mean, what, what, do, what do people see this as? Or what, what are they thinking about this? Uh, okay, uh, uh, as I know, uh, Dr. Maltsov is planning to write a book about uh, such phenomena as, as uh, Black, Love, uh, Black Lives Matters. And uh, Dr. Maltsov, please, uh, you have a, an opportunity to comment and maybe uh, to talk uh, about your new book about BLM. Yeah. Спасибо огромное, Константин Владимирович, что мне дали слово, как всегда в своем репертуаре. Thank you, Konstantina, for giving me the floor. You are like in your style, as usual. Yes, I, just, I, I just announced your, your new book. I just announced 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 your new book. When we are speaking about tendencies that are taking place now in the US, I am always surprised. I'm always surprised when I'm speaking about things like Black Lives Matter and other events. I think it's quite obvious what is actually going on in the U.S. right now. It is about a political conflict in its essence. It's not even a criminal conflict. It's about conflicting for power in the U.S. between two power structures. И как бы у каждой стороны всегда существуют сильные и слабые стороны. And each side, as always, they all have their strong sides and weak ones. Одна сторона считает своей сильной стороной средства массовой информации и ложь. And one of the sides, which is in the war with another, it considers it to be its strong qualities, the mass media influence and lying, deceiving people. 
Вторая сторона как бы считает, что э, как бы они прекрасно умеют организовывать протесты и революции. And another side uh, thinks that it is very capable of organizing protests and riots. То есть Соединенные Штаты Америки организовывали эти протесты и революции, Госдепартамент организовывал по всему миру. So U.S. Department of State has have been organizing these riots and revolutions all over the world. Да. Так они боролись с тиранами и вот злодеями, которые мешают американцам заниматься бизнесом. That was one of the strategies to deal with tyrants in different parts of the world that are making hard for U.S. businesses to continue their activities. Но пришло время попробовать Соединенным Штатам, что это такое на собственном народе. Дело в том, что, еще раз повторяю, то оружие, которое в руках определенных людей, какое у них есть, то они используют в борьбе за власть. When people fight for power, they use the weapon that is available to them. Я не знаю, что думают по этому поводу люди, живущие в США. I don't know what's the perspective of people that are living in the U.S. on this. Да, но навести порядок в Соединенных Штатах Америки это ну, совершенно ну, легко сделать. But bringing an order in the U.S. is not that formidable. Дело в том, что, как бы сказал профессор Дикаса, как не нужно бороться с деньгами, с отмыванием денег на политическом уровне. As Professor Antonio just noted that it is inconsequential to fight money laundering uh, on the governmental level. I mean, there are things that you just do not fight with. Вот точно так же не нужен, не нужен, не нужен порядок перед выборами в Соединенных Штатах Америки. So this is the same thing applies that you don't have to have an order before the elections in the U.S. Когда нынешний президент Соединенных Штатов Америки, Дональд Трамп, пришел к власти, When Donald Trump came to power, то есть демократы не согласились с этими выборами ни психологически, ни морально, ни ментально, никак. Democrats uh, were not in content with the outcome of elections on all level, I mean, just by their attitude, morale, I mean, psychologically, they didn't... I mean, they were not in content. С первых же дней правления нового президента Соединенных Штатов Америки возникла война между республиканцами и демократами. And from the first day of Donald Trump's being in the president's office, the Democrats and Republicans, they started uh, openly being at war. И то, что вы видите, это продолжение этой войны. And what uh, we are observing today, I mean, from outside, is the continuation of that conflict. И Дональд Трамп считает, что средств, все средства массовой информации в его руках, поэтому он держит Соединенные Штаты под прицелом. Президент Трамп считает, а демократы ему показывают, что ему не помогут э, как бы ни средства массовой информации, ничего, и они камни на камни лучше от, от США не оставят нежели позволят Трампу повторный раз избраться. In contrast to that, uh, Democrats consider that no, 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 having mass media in your hand is not enough. We better uh, make it chaotic, but we won't allow uh, to be re-elected second time. То есть то, что вы видите в Соединенных Штатах Америки, это хорошо организованное революционное движение. So what we see in the U.S., in my opinion, is a very well-organized revolutionary да, то есть это не просто люди протестуют. It is not only protesting people. Там нет никаких протестующих. It's not about, like, protests. Это подготовленные люди, которые подготовлены специально для осуществления массовых беспорядков и актов гражданского неповиновения. It's uh, about very well specially trained people that are trained to organize this type of massive chaotic events. And civil disobedience. То есть это люди, которые прошли специальную подготовку. Again, to emphasize, this is about people that have went through the special training and know how to organize these things well. Это не криминал. And it's not criminal. Криминалу чем э, спокойнее политическая обстановка, тем лучше. Because if criminals, I mean, crim, um, organized crimes perspective on this is that the more tranquil and the more calm is the politi politi political situation, the better. Да, чем хуже всем вокруг, тем криминалу лучше. And the worse 
uh, I mean, everything is around the batteries for criminal. А это политика, это не криминал. And now what we are seeing in the U.S. again, we see a political clash of uh, different powers and not uh, criminal. Я, я не знаю, как в Соединенных Штатах Америки ну, разрешены подобного рода формирование и подготовка подобного рода людей. I don't know how in U.S. they are allowed, the situation has happened that they were allowed to organize and prepare such trained people. Для меня вообще американская демократия это загадка. For me personally, the American democracy itself is an enigma. Я привык к европейской демократии, американская для меня всю жизнь загадка. I'm used to European democracy, but American, as I've said, is an enigma. Поэтому мне очень странно, что в Соединенных Штатах Америки никто не понимает, что это может закончиться огромной бедой. It's quite strange that many people in the U.S. probably they do not understand that this uh, might bring a very, very uh, harsh consequences for the whole country. Вот что думают люди, которые смотрят на это со стороны. So this is uh, one of the perspectives of uh, people that are looking at the U.S. Uh, from outside. Спасибо за внимание. Thank you for attention. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Maltsev. And the last question in this discussion part uh, from Don Pinak. Please, Don Pinak, formulate your question. You wanted to discuss some question. I do, but I'm, I'm going to jump out of environmental crime. I, I want to enter the discussion that's happening now. I've, I've just reread Alex de Tocqueville on, in his uh, travels in, in America. And he sets up, he says there are two forces. There's the, the mob on the one side, which is important to, to, to get things going. And there's the conservative uh, uh, side that, that doesn't move and is also a danger. And democracy is a balance between those forces, which is interesting. He's writing before the American Civil War. He predicted almost the American Civil War would happen. But taking that forward, there, there is, you, you have the, the conservative corporate on the one side and, and the people who are outside that space, which are the mob, but that's not the right way to describe them. They are the disaffected uh, of that process. The question I want to ask is, is there not perhaps a third leg of democracy which is undermining democracy? We all looking at the criminal element which leaks money and power out all over the place. Uh, you know, in South Africa, we are we are seeing much the same in a different way that, that you are experiencing German America that that we have um, uh, we probably have 200 street demonstrations a day in South Africa and and we have um, a corrupt uh, government system which has been corrupted by corporates uh, on the other side and we have a criminal element so there in South Africa there's this play of forces between crime uh, establishment and mob. Um, and, and I'm just wondering whether we shouldn't take to talk of all one step further and ask what is that third leg? And, and has it something to do um, with the, the, the uh, violation really of democracy uh, using crime, the autocratic process that crime can master to be a third force in what is a democratic or, or the collapse of a democratic process worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, please, Jim Finkan. Uh, Oleg Maltsev, please comment, and after that, Jim Finkan hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. Я прошу прощения, что я взял слово. Я буквально три минуты. Sorry for, I mean, taking up the floor. Uh, I'll be very brief for several minutes. Дорогой Дунпинок, так было всегда и спокон веков. Dear Don Pinnick, uh, it was always like this in all centuries when you're saying that the crime is like uh, another power force in the democracy. For instance, European criminal it didn't emerge like from nowhere. So it's not, it was not about like poor, for instance, people that uh, just took their arms and weapons and started uh, doing their thing. То есть криминал это та структура, та сила, которая была всегда выгодна государству. 
So basically, criminality was always that power component, always that structure that was profitable to governments. И больше скажу, там в Италии и Испании это национальный спорт. And for instance, in Italy and Spain, we can almost see that this is like a national sport. Thank you for, for giving me the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Maltsov. Jim? Uh, yeah, I, I would just add, I mean, I think this discussion about, what raises issues about how do we define organized crime? For example, when, when we traditionally think about organized crime, we, we talked earlier about mafias and so on, we think about structured organizations that are about making money. They're not really interested in politics, except as it might assist them to make more money. That, that's, not, that, that's not their goal. But now we have these other kinds of organizations, if you will, and I use the term organization loosely because they are very loose in some instances, whose goal is not to make uh, 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 money, whose goal is to use crimes toward other ends. Should they also be included in our definition of organized crime? And is that say, well, there's the whole, I mean, what does it suggest about who makes up those groups? Where do they come from? How do we confront them? What, 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 should, be, what, what, what should law enforcement be doing and prosecution and so on be doing to deal with these new, uh, I mean, they, some of these groups are called in this country domestic terrorists. Well, you know, that's, a, that's also not a self-defining label. What is a domestic terrorist who has some kind of political agenda but engages in criminality to achieve that political agenda? Who, who are they? What are, what are they? What, how should we classify them? Yeah, dear, dear Professor Nicasso, yeah, please. I, I totally agree with the, with the, with the, with the gym. Uh, I... I, I think that the, the greatest problem in understanding organized crime is not with the word crime, but with the word organized. And he's absolutely right. While violence is the backbone, power is the lifeblood of the mafia and other mafia type criminal organizations. Because if we go back in history, we clearly, and that's what the Dr. Meltzer underlined before, it's a criminal gangs or criminal organization have not arisen as a result of a struggle between the rich and the poor or the strong versus the, the rich as the legend that they, they spin about themselves and would like us to believe, but rather uh, as a opportunism by a small group of wrongdoers to benefit themselves. Uh, I, I, when, uh, uh, I was listening uh, uh, the, the Dr. Ko Lin Ching at one point uh, he mentioned that uh, the triads need uh, or, uh, some criminal organization need uh, this uh, kind of uh, protective umbrella uh, I, 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 my 40 plus years of study of the Italian mafia criminal organization, I always uh, 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 realized that the, there was not a protective umbrella, but the, there was a kind of a trend to shake themselves in the sense that they protect one another, in mm -hmm. the sense that the, what we used to perceive as a, a pathological uh, 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 problem now is more ph physiological because you can survive just with the violence. You survive if you have political and financial connection. So those criminal organizations, they have gained an incredible amount of social recognition, as well as having spread their tentacles in the political and economic sphere of the society. And this is the problem. The problem is how can we define organized crime? What is organized crime? It's just the, the military aspect, uh, the, the people that use violence, the people that, that uh, 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 fire guns, or the people well connected that sometime like uh, 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 Dawn underline uh, uh, earlier, so they undermining democracy. The idea that uh, 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 sometimes they are well connected, they use the money, the money enter 
easily in the legal system. Politicians need them and they cannot do without their support. And that is what we are seeing today. It's more about a, a kind of a political system. Because uh, well, I, I remember when uh, the Italian uh, encyclopedia, uh, Treccani, the largest in Italy, asked me to write the entry of organized crime, one of the aspects that I emphasized in the entry was that there can be corruption without mafia, but there is no mafia without corruption. So mafia and corruption are two, side, two, two, two sides of the same coin. And this is the, the major issue today. The idea that we are not able to understand that the, that the, that the mafias, uh, criminal organization, uh, were able to combine tradition and innovation, but they are a power system today, capable to corrupt, capable to uh, infiltrate the uh, institution, undermine the democracy. That's what the mafia is all about. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Nicasso. Maybe Colin Chin, you want to add something? I believe uh, my uh, colleague, Jim Finkenauer, used to emphasize uh, the concept of organized crime versus crime that is organized. So it is very important that when we talk about transnational organized crime, we have to understand whether these groups are real organized crime groups or groups that are involved in crime that is organized. So when I talk about the Chinese groups, I mentioned to you that there are two major groups. The first major groups are the Jianghu people, the Jianghu groups. These groups like the triad, the organized gang, the Jiao Tou, the mafia style gang, the Tong and the street gangs, those six groups will be considered as real organized crime groups. Chinese organized crime groups. And when we move to a, ver a variety of transnational criminal uh, organizations, like the people who are involved in drug trafficking, human trafficking, human smuggling, counterfeiting, wildlife trafficking, these groups are not Jianghu groups. These are not organized crime groups. These are groups just involved in crime that is organized. And Jim and I, normally will differentiate that, you know, organized crime groups, they use violence, they have a reputation for violence, they have a structure, they have territory, they have names, they have longevity, and they're also able to corrupt government officials. When you move to those uh, non-organized crime groups, groups that are involved in all kinds of transnational criminal activities, you don't see violence, you don't see corruption, you don't see organization, you don't see structure, you don't see name, you don't see territories. So it is very important that we do not confuse these two groups and assume that they are the same or assume that they work together. Because I study heroin trafficking, methamphetamine, human trafficking, human smuggling, counterfeiting, once in a while, there may be a gangsters involved in it, but the majority of the people who are involved in these emerging transnational criminal activities do not belong to those six groups that I talk about. So I think it is important that we make that differentiation. Thank you, Valentin. Uh, and uh, as I see uh, this idea of uh, making a discussion panel more interactive, is a, is a good idea, yes, Jim? No, uh, maybe this is has to do with uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Nikasa. That, that that what what do you just say probably has to do with uh, the, the distinction you make among a criminal organization in 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 China or outside of China in Hong Kong, but not necessarily what I was talking about. I was talking about criminal organization such as the Drangheta. I, I was talking about different uh, criminal organization. Uh, the, uh, criminal organization capable uh, to corrupt and capable to use violence, uh, to combine violence and corruption. I'm, I was talking about uh, the Drangheta uh, 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 type or mm. Drangheta-like criminal organization. Right. 
I totally agree that there is a distinction uh, uh, that we should make. Otherwise, uh, conventional crime and organized crime would be all together. And I, I try to make a distinction between mafia and mafia-like criminal organization and a, a crime that, I, that is organized. I totally agree that it's totally different. Names, tradition, meets, rituals, symbols, and, and, and so many things that characterize the mafia-type criminal organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Konnichin? I will agree. I think if you are talking about the Drangheta, definitely this will be con considered as a true organized crime group, not a group that is, not crime that is organized, but organized crime, that's for sure. Uh, so such conversation uh, uh, is an effective innovation in our roundtables. And uh, to uh, finish uh, this part of roundtable, I will give the floor to Dr. Maitse. I would like to uh, tell an anecdote just to make the situation more. Я в свое время изучал русскую криминальную традицию в одном большом городе России. At one point uh, in my life, I've been investigating Russian criminal tradition in one of the largest cities in Russia. И в этом я не просто изучал ее именно в этом городе, потому что в этом городе считалось, что это самая сильная организованная преступность, которая существует на постсоветском пространстве. And I've been uh, studying Russian organized um, crime, I mean, in that city because it was considered to be the most powerful uh, place where it exists on post-Soviet Union. И я был свидетелем интервью, в общем-то, которое вошло потом в фильм, который сняли центральные телеканалы России. And um, I saw an interview which was um, uh, then broadcasted by central uh, TV channels in Russia. Где журналисты брали интервью у начальника полиции области этой. So the journalists were interviewing the head of the police of the whole region. И журналисты задали ему вопрос, знает ли он, что у него в области самая сильная организованная преступность в России. And the journalists asked, do you happen to know that in your region is the most powerful organized crime of Russia? И он ответил, что они ему не докладывали, что они организованы. And the head of police said, well, they didn't report to me that they are organized. Да, по -по 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 поэтому как бы, в общем-то, в этом весь вся суть. And this is the point. То есть они ему не пришли и не сказали, что они организованы. They didn't come to him and didn't say that they are organized. И поэтому он не в курсе, что у него самая сильная организованная преступная группа and thus uh, allegedly he didn't know that uh, in his region there is the most powerful organized crime in Russia. They didn't report. So he doesn't know. Everything is fine in the city. And in the region as well. Я думаю, что ему с этими людьми тоже хорошо. And I think he is also fine with those people. Он стал очень обеспеченным человеком. Because he became a very well-off man. <laughs> Поэтому он, в общем-то, как он может их считать организованной преступностью? So how come he could consider them to be organized crime? Они просто уважаемые деловые люди. They are just respect, allegedly very respectable men. Ну какая преступность? So what do they have to do with crime? Это просто бизнес. It's just a business. А что касается, как выглядит организованная преступность? And as for the how organized crime looks like? Я всегда как бы я уверен, что со мной никто не согласится. I'm sure that nobody will agree with me on this round table. Потому что у меня взгляд все-таки как бы специфически на это на все. Because I have a very specific perspective on this. Да. Но если взять Business corporation. But if we take a business corporation and we, on the other side, if we take special intelligence service вместе, and if we combine these two entities специфическую религию и субкультуру. And when we combine, if we also put inside the, that amalgam like uh, a specific religious philosophy, subculture actually. 
и дать команду этой структуре работать, work, вот вы получите организованную преступность. Спасибо за внимание. Thank you for Thank you, Dr. Martsov. And uh, we can continue. And the second question of the round table is, uh, have the prognosis stated in the previous meeting came true? And if yes, in what ways? Uh, so uh, I give the floor to Dr. Uh, Antonio Nicasa, please. Uh, I, as I said before, I, I don't, uh, I, don't, I, I, I think that the situation are getting, uh, the situation is getting worse to compare to what we were able to uh, predict in, in, in May, in the sense that uh, many uh, police investigation discovered that uh, uh, Italian major criminal organization, and particularly the Ndrangheta, not only in the southern part of Italy, but also in the northern part of Italy, they are heavily involved in uh, the uh, money laundering operations, and also they are organizing themselves to uh, get their, hand, their hands on the stimulus funds not only in, in, in Italy, but uh, also in uh, Europe. Uh, there was a, a debate after the publication of an article published in a German uh, newspaper. And uh, the concern of uh, the, that journalist was that uh, uh, Europe should not give money to Italy because the money could end up in the hand of the criminals. And, and, and I disagree with the, the, that uh, uh, statement uh, because uh, the dangers of uh, putting the hand on the stimulus fund is not an Italian concern or a concern that uh, uh, it's related only to Italy, but it's related to all major uh, countries in, in, in Europe. Because if, uh, if I want to study the Ndrangheta, I, I could easily move it to Germany, where uh, the presence of the Drangheta uh, clans uh, is overwhelming. It's uh, practically no land. If I want to study uh, the Ndrangheta, I can easily move it to the city of London. If I can want to understand what's going on in the Eastern Europe, I can clearly move in Bulgaria or in uh, Hungary or in the Czech Republic uh, or in Russia, where the, the Drangheta at the present time is investing money in the old business. Uh, at one point, they were purchased stock for the Gazprom. And so I, I, I really, I, um, I was a, a, a speaker on, uh, on a conference organized by uh, the Italian government uh, a few weeks ago uh, about the concern raised by this uh, uh, the, the possibility of uh, investing a criminal asset uh, in the legal uh, in the legal economy is a major concern, and it's a concern that is raising from uh, 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 all uh, political level. Uh, just to give you some indication. Uh, in the mid-90s in Italy, there was an historical shift in the relationship between uh, politics and mobsters. Until the 1992-1995, at the time of the Christian Democrat Party, at the time of what the Italy called uh, the First Republic, uh, the mobster, uh, mobsters seek the assistance and the support of politicians. Politicians were in charge. In the uh, uh, police investigation, and I can, uh, and I was able to analyze all of them since 1995 to 2020, I think I saw only one case out of uh, 50, 60, where uh, a mobster in some way ask 
for the assistance of politician. In all the other case where politician, politicians that seek the support of mobsters. And this is because uh, practically they, uh, they control uh, uh, votes, not only in the southern part of Italy, but also in the northern part of Italy. They are money, they invest money, they control uh, uh, the labor force in some areas, they control sectors of the economies, and practically in, 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 in many regions of Italy, police was able to uncover this link between the Ndrangheta and politicians at all level. With one interesting point, the sense that in, in a region like Piedmont, in the, the, the area where Turin is located, they supported the candidate from the center left. In a region like Lombardy, where Milano is located, they supported the candidate from the center right. So at the end, they showed it never had a kind of ideology. Their ideology is power. And, and, and they would try to make any kind of compromise. And that's it's what happened. What happened today, where banks are accepting their money, where stock markets are, are is accepting their money, politicians looking for their political support, um, professional of any kind so put themselves available to those to those individuals, and, and I think uh, uh, sometime. Uh, I see some strange strategies that try to divert the attention from the real problem to uh, 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 problems that in some time created by, by media, at least in Italy, uh, to avoid the focus on what is the major issue of Italy, mafia and corruption. And they come out with many other uh, issue and, and, and topics that the, there is because there is no political will to sit down around the table and focus on what they have to do to solve this uh, this problem. You have to consider that the the, the, the mafia and drang that the Camorra date back. Uh, centuries. Uh, we have a, a first traces of this uh, organization in the first half of 1800s and they were able to survive all kind of situation and, 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 and manage to remain uh, uh, strong and, and, and powerful. And I think uh, uh, if Italy uh, don't uh, acknowledge that uh, the real problem is corruption and uh, uh, organized crime and uh, uh, uncover and, and, and don't only focus on the criminal element but try to uh, uh, fight the uh, political and financial connection, they will never be able uh, to uh, get rid of this, uh, of this problem. The idea to focus only on organized crime and not in on corruption, the idea not to looking about the political and financial connection of those criminal organizations, it's uh, one of the major, of the major problem in, in, in the uh, um, strategy to combat organized crime, not only in Italy, but in the rest of the world. And I'm talking about Drangheta because Drangheta is an organization with international ramification and it's a kind of power system capable to reproduce those this network of trust everywhere. It's nothing to do because it, it, uh, the Drangheta is not a way of thinking, but it's a way of doing. And if they are able to uh, reproduce the, 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 this, this network of trust in any other part, they are able to establish other groups and branches, other branches of the organization outside of the homeland, which is, uh, which is Calabria.
Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. Uh, and uh, I give the floor to Dr. Maltsev. Thank you for giving me the floor. Что касается прогнозов, которые вы сделали в прошлый раз, как бы мне бы хотелось сделать несколько аналитических заметок, я бы сказал так. As for the predictions that we made on PL conference, I would like to make several analytical comments. Ну, что касается Украины, профессор Саинчин, как бы он как бы рассказал, что у нас здесь как бы происходит, но на самом деле как бы у нас здесь самый лучший карантин в мире. When it comes to situation in Ukraine, Professor Sainchin already told what is going on in here. But in fact, when it comes comes to quarantine, it's like the best quarantine in the world. Я уверен, что вы хотели бы такой карантин у себя. I'm sure that everybody would desire for such a quarantine in their places. Да, то есть, как бы, по сути, у нас ничего не изменилось. I mean, in a nutshell, nothing really changed in here. Но тогда, когда мы с вами разговаривали, наше правительство собиралось устраивать тот карантин, который в Европе. But when we were meeting at, in May, the government in Ukraine was planning to organize the quarantine as it was implemented in many European countries. Да, и как только они попытались это сделать, здесь волна преступности началась. And as soon as they attempted to do, to imitate other European states, the waves of criminality just started appearing every single day. Я не знаю, как в Европе, потому что я только с Хорватии вернулся, и про нее сейчас поговорим тоже. I don't know how in whole Europe currently, I was just in Croatia recently, but not in other countries. Но на Украине карантин это катализатор преступности. But I should say that in Ukraine, the quarantine measure itself, the strict quarantine is a catalyzator for criminalization. То есть, как бы, вы же прекрасно понимаете, что такое вот, попытка устанавливать карантин. I mean, certainly people, all people understand what uh, the attempt to impose a strict quarantine looks like. То есть это по сути сразу объединение людей. Basically, it's uh, making people poor in a single second. И объединение криминала в начале. And in the first place, they are trying to diminish the well off of criminality. Не той организованной преступности, про которую мы говорим. And certainly, it doesn't relate to the organized crime that we were speaking before. It relates to а, нижнего уровня криминала. I'm speaking about the lower levels of crime. Да. А объединявший криминал идет еще на более жесткие преступления, чем он шел до этого. And the lower level of criminality, it starts uh, being even more aggressive uh, in the way it conducts its criminal activities to compensate for the losses they... И даже те люди, которые как бы вообще не были склонны к криминалу какому-то, so what happens that people that were not even inclined to any kind of criminal activities, uh, запасы, when they run out of their money and things that they saved up, they are potential people that might start committing crimes. Мелко, First, it would be, of course, pec uh, peculiar, I mean, small crimes. Потом больше, больше. Then, then it would be bigger and bigger. Да, то есть как бы карантин это катализатор преступности. So basically again, as I've said, quarantine is a catalyzator of criminalization. Слава Богу, что на Украине это быстро поняли и все исчезло. So thank God in Ukraine they understood it quite quickly and they uh, softened the measures. Ну кроме внешних ограничений. Uh, except external uh, limits that uh, were logical. Я имею в виду перед самолетов там и все всего остального. Which is uh, related to transportation uh, like airplanes and etc. Да. Я только что вернулся из Хорватии. I just came from Croatia. Я вот думаю, что хорватский опыт он бы должен быть ну для Европы главным. And I think the example of Croatia should be the main one in Europe. Да, то есть как бы я в Хорватии пробыл две недели. So I was there for two weeks. То, с научным визитом. Uh, in the expedition. Да, и могу отметить очень грамотную работу и хорватских полицейских. And I should note the 
well-organized and very smart work of Croatian police forces. Никакого карантина нет. There was no quarantine as such that would impose and make you feel uncomfortable. Он бы как бы есть. It, it is there, but. Но его нет. But it's not. Да, то есть как бы никто никого не дергает с этим карантином, как бы все, если и делают какие-то замечания, то только в информационном порядке. Even if people are um, basically said uh, about restrict, I mean different restrictions, I mean this is done in a recommendational manner in the way it doesn't escalate any conflict. И обратите внимание, Хорватия в зеленой зоне. And please pay attention that Croatia in the green zone. Никакого, никакого роста вируса у них нет. They are, virus is not like spreading. Потому что они поступили очень грамотно. Because their actions were smart. То есть они сказали, сделали у себя там анализ на коронавирус, приехали, показали нам на границе и занимайтесь чем хотите. Because uh, once uh, you take the coronavirus test, you're analyzed, you just show them, and then you are free to conduct your activity as you want. То есть на границе отдал справку о тесте и, и пошел. So it's enough for them to provide the uh, test uh, analysis. Больше вас никто ни о чем не спрашивает. Nobody would ask you and to create uh, hardships for you. Да, то есть как бы uh, и, и соответственно люди с коронавирусом не прилетают в Хорватию. And certainly people that are infected with coronavirus, they do not come there. Да, и соответственно у них там нет никаких проблем с карантином. And they don't have problems with quarantine. Зачем Европа устроила вот этот карантин у себя? And why most European countries created the chaotic quarantine in their countries? Я, например, не могу сказать ничего про Италию, потому что я там без месяца не был и о чем глубоко сожалею. I cannot speak for Italy because I haven't been there for half a year and I'm very uh, it's very unfortunate for me that I was not able to. Но я не думаю, что итальянцам хорошо от того, что у них там карантин. But I don't think that uh, Italians are happy of what is going on in there with the quarantine measures. Да, я не думаю, что итальянцы сильно разбогатели от карантина. I don't think that Italians uh, gained a lot of money because of these restrictions. Да, и как бы я, у меня очень много друзей в Италии, и все они говорят только об одном, зачем это нужно. And friends of mine that are in Italy, they all say that, I mean, uh, what is going on, why we have all this, why do we need То this? То есть, по сути, вот эта глупая европейская политика uh, повторять друг за другом карантины. So basically, this not smart uh, logic of European countries to imitate each other when it comes to restrictions and quarantines. На политическом уровне. On the political level, certainly. Она просто катализатор условий для работы и орг преступности. It just escalates the conditions for organized crime work. И как бы по сути свои объединение своих граждан. And making their own people poor and poor. И сколько ученых не пишут прекратить этими глупостями заниматься, нужно как бы действовать совершенно иначе. Ну, прекратить этот карантин, ни одно правительство не хочет его прекращать по причине того, что, вероятно, он ему зачем-то нужен. And no matter how many scholars produce their works and explain things about quarantine, that things should be done in a different way, countries do not uh, take that into consideration and probably states do need the, uh, this long, long quarantine. И по сути свои, как бы, то, что говорят, что выделяются огромные деньги для рестартинга экономики, как бы. And the fact that huge stimulus funds are provided to restart the economy. Вероятно, это и нравится этим государствам, что есть возможность осваивать какие-то бюджеты. Probably this is one of the alluring uh, points for states so that they have these funds that they can use. Да, for ну, а, как бы, раз есть бюджет, значит, его можно делить. And as we always I mean, know, if the funds are there for governments, then there's something to divide. А так как они сами его поделить не могут, для этого же нужны специальные, как бы, ну, способы сокрытия этих преступлений. And since, uh, I mean, nobody would allow them to divide the money, I mean, just out of the blue, they need a certain mechanism to 
cover this machinations. Да, то нужно пригласить деловых партнеров. Then they might uh, invite like business partners. Да, которые называются организованной преступностью. That are termed uh, organized crime. Которые умеют это хорошо делать. That know how to do it well. Которые отмоют, uh, как у нас говорят, uh, эти деньги лучше, чем в итальянской химчистке. That would launder the money as it says, it, it is said in Russian better than in an Italian dry cleaner. Да, поэтому, как бы, по сути своей, по сути своей, если говорить про Соединенные Штаты Америки, if, if about, uh, States, то там же, ну, она, ну, как бы, устроена с Штатами. И в каждом штате свои законы и свои привилегии. And they would have their own privileges, own laws and restrictions. И как бы там, в общем-то, я так понимаю, тоже всем нравится коронавирус. I guess in there people are also um, fond of, in quotation marks, of having the... Какой же американец не любит деньги? So there's no American that do not like money. А здесь деньги из воздуха. And in here it's almost like making money out of air. Ну, есть коронавирус, много денег для того, чтобы бороться с коронавирусом. Мой знакомый один в США как бы говорит, что они еще как-то глупо э, ну, крадут деньги на коронавирусе в США. Да. У него много других было идей, как это можно было бы сделать, он со мной поделился. Да, поэтому, как бы, вы же прекрасно понимаете, что власти, как бы, этот карантин выгоден. И это то есть, как бы, по сути, если взять Украину, то официально украинское правительство опубликовало заявление, что они освоили только 35% бюджета, выделенного на то, чтобы бороться с коронавирусом. То есть, а, соответственно, нужно еще 65% освоить, а для этого должен, вот, чтобы был коронавирус. For instance, if we speak about Ukraine, they officially stated that they have used only 35% of funds that was allocated to fight coronavirus, which would mean that they need to spend 65 more percent and they would need to prolong the quarantine. То есть в результате мы как бы видим, что по сути своей то, что ну, случилось в Европе, как бы это какая-то финансовая махинация, а не эпидемия. As a result, in Europe especially, it seems that It is not that much about epidemics, but about like financial machination that took place. Thank you for attention. Thank you, Dr. Maltsev and Jim Finkinaro. You can continue our roundtable. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I guess speaking as one of those Americans who love money, uh, go, going, going back to the May conference, one of the things that, that was uh, talked about was uh, a, a, an increase in violent crimes that were seeming to occur in certain American cities, particularly murders and, and uh, 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 aggravated assaults and so on. Well, that pattern has certainly continued. I think as was mentioned in yesterday's session by the, the former FBI person, statistics show significant increases in murders and aggravated assaults in many major American cities. Uh, there's also continued to be increases, and this was mentioned in May as well, Uh, in domestic violence uh, cases. Now, I don't, I don't know at this point of any empirical research that's been done to explain why those things might be occurring. But if I were to sit here as a criminologist and, and throw out some hypotheses, uh, certainly one of them is, won't come as a surprise to anybody listening, that we have a lot of guns uh, in the United States. Uh, and guns are certainly related to murders uh, and, and violent assaults and, and so on. The other thing that's happened is people have lost their jobs. You lose your job, on the one hand, you got no income. On the other hand, you got a lot of free time. On the third hand, you got a lot of time where you're at home, perhaps with your significant other, whoever that is, 
uh, and and a lot of togetherness. And then you have drinking that gets combined into that process. And all of a sudden, you see resorts to violence. People on the street or in the home, and they're and they're they're resentful. Uh, they're they don't like their situation. They act out. Uh, they're drinking, et cetera, as I mentioned, and you so so you see these increases uh, in violence. Uh, it, it, this is a this is a very different pattern because for many years, probably 20 years or so, crime was basically declining in major cities uh, in the U.S., particularly violent crimes, and now it's had this upturn over the last six, seven, uh, eight months. Uh, it, largely, it seems as a consequence of the impact of the of the pandemic. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so. Now I give the floor to Don Pinak. Please, you can continue our Thank roundtable. Thank you very much. Um, South Africa locked down hard. Uh, they locked down early. <clears throat> you couldn't buy alcohol. You couldn't buy cigarettes. You could go to the shops um, to get your food, and that was it. Crime went down spectacularly. The government has a lot of credibility. People were very obedient. South Africans listened to the president, uh, did what he told them. Um, so everybody was very pleased with themselves. Right now, we're pretty much out of COVID. Um, lockdown's over. Um, quarantine is at its lowest possible. There's just a, a limitation on very large numbers of people. And COVID is on the way out, summer's coming. The, the side effect, though, uh, is two things. A lot of people lost their jobs. And uh, when lockdown eased, street crime went up. Um, housebreaking, mugging, all that kind of stuff is, 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 is on the rise. But the other thing that became obvious is that billions of dollars were put forward for COVID relief and for the purchase of equipment. And um, it was stolen. Uh, it was largely stolen by government and, and people in, in corporates. So the respect for the government has gone down and the level of street crime uh, has definitely gone up. Um, and, and just a last thing, and it's nothing to do with South Africa, uh, because of zoonic diseases uh, clearly were the cause of COVID-19, um, there's been a push uh, against the uh, purchase and use of wildlife in, in medical and in, in food. Uh, and it has had an effect on poaching. Uh, it didn't have an immediate effect because I think the poachers didn't realize that it was being blocked at the other end. Um, now, what we don't know is if that's going to return. If the uh, prevention of uh, the, the consumption of wildlife uh, continues, uh, in mainly in Asia, uh, it's going to have an effect in Africa, positive effect. Um, it, it's going to take a while for the local purchase to wake up to the fact that they're not getting paid because nobody wants their stuff. My concern is, of course, that when it's all over, it's all over. And then we go back to the wet markets, uh, we go back to poaching. Uh, so that's me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dunbin. Uh, Colin Chin, please. You can continue. Uh, thank you. Uh, I talk to high-ranking police officers in China a lot. And whenever I ask them of the question, which group is the most powerful organized crime group in your city? They always say, we are. So the, the police department, they always, the, the, their point is that, look, uh, we are in charge. We are the most powerful group in China. So if we are happy, we will allow certain organized crime groups to survive. And if we are not happy, we can go out tomorrow and just wipe them out, just like this. So to answer your question, the second question about what has changed uh, after the pandemic, uh, my answer is, it's not the pandemic, it's who is in charge that is the most important. And after Xi Jinping came to power in 2012, uh, organized crime in China has fundamentally changed. 
And the reason is because Xi Jinping is, uh, wants to tightly control the Chinese society now. So all the fun, all the prostitution, the drinking, the dining, and the whining, the gambling, everything uh, is uh, now uh, dramatically uh, reduced. So as a result of that, it definitely have an impact on these uh, organized crime groups. Uh, for example, back to Jim first uh, at the very beginning, as uh, when he said uh, whether the, the, the triads, they are in decline. And the answer is definitely yes, because uh, after Hong Kong was returned to mainland China in 1997, Macau was returned to China in 1999, uh, the triad groups in Hong Kong and Macau, uh, they quiet a lot. They, they try to you know, maintain a very low profile. And the reason is because they don't want to antagonize uh, Beijing. Because if they do, they know that you know, they will have to pay a, uh, the price. So if you look at the, the level of activities uh, in China, take prostitution, for example. Uh, before Xi Jinping came to power, uh, when you go to China and check into a five-star hotel, uh, you will be surprised that there may be five, uh, or that, that, that there is uh, maybe you know, five brothels within the, the hotel. But nowadays, it's uh, being completely wiped out. Wiped out. So the, the answer is that you know, uh, right now in China, all kinds of organized crime activities have uh, dramatically uh, 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 reduced and, uh, and especially after the pandemic, because for, for example, the people that I'm studying, those who are involved in counterfeiting uh, after the pandemic, all the, the demands have dramatically reduced. And as a result, they are all in, in, in very bad shape. But there is one group, however, that is uh, very still very active and also able to expand uh, their illegal activities. And that is the WA group in the Golden Triangle, you know, shifting from opium to heroin to methamphetamine and now into fentanyl and other kinds of emerging drugs. And the reason is because they are not part of China, they are in Myanmar. So as a result, the pandemic has no impact whatsoever on their drug trafficking uh, business. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Professor Alexander Seinchen, please. Alexander Sergeyevich, who is this? We'll be waiting about five or 10 seconds. Okay. Uh, now, um, let's talk about your impressions about this round table. Um, Di Antonio, um, uh, tell me please, what do you think about such formats of round tables? Maybe you have some wishes to the future events Summarize up this round table, please. I always like the opportunity to share my opinion with the distinguished guest. And I believe that this is an opportunity of discussing topics such as organized crime. So I look forward for new initiative organized by Dr. Meldov and, uh, and uh, I really enjoy the opportunity to uh, discuss with you about the topic of uh, great uh, concern uh, such as organized crime. Thank you. Jim Finkenauer, what do you, th what do you think about today's uh, round table? Well, obviously, I think that the, the whole idea of the interaction and the opportunity for people to engage an issue and have different perspectives around the same issue is a, is a good direction. Because what it does is instead of having many sort of unconnected 
issue. It's not that the issue is not important, but they're essentially unconnected and, and they're, they fall into little silos. This way, there's a linkage. Uh, uh, the, the notion, for example, of, of Don Pinnock's idea uh, of uh, uh, referring back to the Tocqueville's notion of the mob led me to think about that the, 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 the idea of the mob has become differentiated. There's not a mob, there are multiple aspects of this mob, some of which have criminal uh, 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 enterprises. So, but, but he probably wasn't intending to talk about that initially, but that came out of this interaction. And I think that kind of spontaneity and ability to go back and forth is, is a very good thing to do. I like that. Thank you, thank you, Jim. Don Pinock. What this has taught me uh, uh, is that we, we get very involved in Africa, talking about the issues of Africa. Um, it's, it's very it's interesting to, to be in a round table with people who are focused on Europe and the United States and the East and not on Africa. Uh, the degree to which Africa is not um, part of your lives at all is interesting to me. Um, and, uh, but it's, it's fascinating to see the parallels that, 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 that happening. I, I really appreciate um, that, 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 that uh, opportunity. Um, and, and I will, uh, if I'm part of these, I will drag you into Africa, I, I promise, uh, because it's important, your, your views here, that organized crime is linked right across the planet. And uh, what, what really concerns me is the, the is not so much the groups, but the networks and, and the avenues by which organized crime happens. And, and look, I'm looking at poaching because of those avenues, because of those networks. Um, and and that, that, that goes into your areas, uh, absolutely. So I, this is why uh, these discussions are really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Don Pinnock. Uh, Colleen Chin, in, it is the first appearance, your first appearance on our, the conferences and roundtables organized by uh, European Academy of Science of Ukraine. So uh, your impressions and what do you think about such formats of uh, roundtables? Oh, thank you. I enjoy it a lot. Uh, this is a very good uh, opportunity for me to able to talk to experts from all over the world and uh, you don't even have to go out of your house so this is uh, just an I'm just incredible because normally when you go to a conference involving people from all over the world you have to travel i mean you have to fly 20 hours 30 hours and then you have to check in with the hotel but like right now you know we can just stay home and uh involve in very interesting uh, conversation. Uh, but what I would like to uh, emphasize is the fact that, you know, instead of paying uh, attention to only those uh, so-called quote unquote traditional organized crime groups like the Italian mafia, the Yakuza, the triads, the Russian mafia, we probably have to pay more attention to those non-traditional organized crime groups, those groups that are more like a business, more like a legitimate business that are taking advantage of globalization, interconnectedness, and make it very difficult to penetrate because they are just like any other legitimate business. Uh, for example, if you take wildlife trafficking, for example, uh, all these people that are involved in it, they, they are not gangsters. They are not really people, uh, but they are also involved in a variety of legitimate business, and it is very difficult to differentiate them. So I think it will be important to pay more attention to those, you know, otherwise legitimate business and their ability to involve in such lucrative, you know, transnational criminal activities. Thank you. Yesterday, uh, yesterday, I called Dr. Maltsev as a father of such uh, meetings, and uh, it's not a joke. Uh, 
um, because it's a great work uh, and uh, it's a work of uh, organizing committee. Uh, so um, I repeat it uh, today. Uh, Dr. Maltsev, your closing speech, please. Uh, my name is... uh, Dear colleagues, мне очень радостно и приятно, что мы имеем возможность собираться хотя бы так. I'm very happy and glad that at least we have an opportunity to gather together at least via web. И как бы, конечно, я не сторонник интернета, я люблю личное общение. Certainly, I really dislike internet uh, communications. I prefer more personal communications. Да, и поэтому как бы ничто не заменит нашего личного общения, личных встреч. Как бы. Because I mean, you can never compensate and make up by internet uh, the personal meeting. This is something more. Но интернет нам позволяет общаться оперативно на дистанции, за что ему, конечно, огромное спасибо. However, thanks to web, at least we can um, communicate uh, very quickly on the distance. Да, и поэтому, безусловно, когда закончится, а мы, мы будем надеяться, что это закончится как можно быстрее. And hopefully this pandemic situation globally will end soon. У нас есть как бы идея о создании этих же круглых столов уже физически. And we have an idea to organize this round tables physically. Да, то есть как, как, чтобы мы могли встречаться за одним круглым столом лично. So we can gather together on one round table in person. Да, и поэтому как бы мы к этой цели будем стремиться. And we will be aspiring towards that goal. И чтобы эти столы стали традиционными. And we will make our best so the, this round tables become a tradition. Потому что ту профессию, которую мы с вами выбрали, она очень редкая в мире. Because the profession that we all choose here in the round table, uh, I mean people that are here, it is a very rare profession. Криминологов очень мало. There are not many criminologists. И нам нужно чаще встречаться и чаще работать вместе. And we should meet more frequently and we should work more frequently together. Спасибо огромное за внимание. Я, как всегда, как бы говорю огромное спасибо всем присутствующим, особенно профессору Никаса. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you all guests that you are here and especially I would like to express my gratitude to Professor Antonio Nicasso. For finding a time in his very extremely busy schedule currently and be together with us today. Thank you all. Let me thank uh, all the speakers, dear colleagues and experts. The online roundtable in uh, organized crime and criminal traditions is about to be over now. In the course of several weeks, the scientific and organizing committee will prepare the resolution, which is going to be available on the website. And of course, every speaker is going to be notified. So the news on the media coverage of the given conference will be also notified by the organizing committee. So thank you all for your contribution and participation. Thank you. Bye-bye.